How is it going, folks? Welcome back to episode number 38 of Park to Prem. Today, we're back. We're not taking on Plymouth Argyle. Uh, no, I've come back today for a reason. I promise there's a good reason for it. Uh, Will still, by the way, though, is Plymouth Argyle manager. I assume in this universe, he doesn't get fined for every game he manages. And if you don't know what I'm referencing there, congratulations, you don't live on social media you should be proud of yourself. But regardless of if you live on social media or not, what I would say is you should be following me over on the thing formerly known as Twitter X. There's a link down below. I, at the moment with this series, we've got 40,000 of you guys watching on the regular daily. And if you want to get some behind the scenes stuff ahead of time with the save game, if you want to be able to reach out to me directly, or maybe you just want to see me get annoyed at the football or Formula One on the weekends, it's a good place to get in contact, reach out and just, you know, continue to stalk me as part of our, our lovely parasocial relationship we've got going on. I feel like I don't promote my other social media enough. So now I can tick that off the, the work, the space, things to do in 2024. We've got it done early. I mentioned there is a reason we're back here on the 21st of August. It's a very random date, but I'm about to sell a clause, and that clause is the sell-on clause from Andrew Slate. Now, you might remember we sold him to Swansea for £700,000 last January, and then I loaned him back for half a year. And in that half a year, we kind of phased him out the team a little bit. He didn't play a whole lot, the left back. And whilst we did have a sell-on clause in his contract, I wasn't sure if we were going to get much for, for it because he had this release clause active with Swansea upon their relegation. He has just signed a new deal with Swansea, which takes the release clause, which I think was at £2 million or something, maybe even less than that. It bumps it up to £10 million. And off the back of that, my board have gone away, they've negotiated, and Swansea have agreed a buyout for this clause of £1.89 million. Now, bear in mind, I sold Slate for £700,000, and it's 50% of any profit. So in reality, for us to make this kind of money off him, he would have to leave Swansea for £4.5 million. And whilst he is a good young left back, he didn't really develop that much at us. And one of the reasons I was quite willing to let him go was... I wasn't really sure if he was going to develop. And given the fact I still have those reservations, we've already received £700,000. I am actually just going to sell the clause here. It is a load of money, close to £2 million. It takes the total transfer fee, if you want to look at it one way, up to £2.6 million that we've now received for Slate. And when that clause now sold, the bank balance sits at over £4 million. Of course, the youth level and youth facilities are on their way to being upgraded. Over the summer, our training facilities dropped by half a star just due to age. We can maybe look to get that improved. And ultimately, that money we've just received is going to help us out massively. Now, anyway, as I just said, I'm not going back for this game against Plymouth. I'm now going to go away and play a little bit of Football Manager and come back at a time that I think seems good. At the moment, I'll be honest, when I look at our upcoming fixtures, there's nothing too inspiring going on. So if Football Manager would like to, well, give me some inspiration, that would be just dandy. We'll run the intro. I'll be back at some point in the future. Let's hope the Football Manager gods have done me a favour. I will tell you what, shout out to the Football Manager gods, they've done me a favour. How does the Carabao Cup third round against Arsenal sound? Yeah, I know, it sounds good, doesn't it? Now, it is going to be an away game against Arsenal at the Emirates. I have already done an away day at Arsenal. I did it in last year's Park to Prem, and I do want to avoid just repeating away days. Of course, I did leave some out last year of Premier League clubs, including Anfield, knowing that we might want them for future years. So there will be away days to come. But yeah, we, we've done the Emirates. This Arsenal team, quite good. They won the Premier League two years ago. They finished third place last year. Yeah, we're probably going to get battered, but it'll be fun. And I mean, look at the positives. Even if we do get battered after it, we get to take on Bromley, who are currently bottom in League Two. So I'd quite like to get a big win against them. Now, you will note here the overall balance, and we're only eight days on from that last bit that I recorded pre-intro, it's dropped by £700,000. There are reasons for that, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the board requests. Yes, they didn't give me my coaching course. I'm annoyed about that too. But what they did grant me is improved training facilities. They are going to be done in four months. So that is going to be improved youth facilities, training facilities, the youth level going up as well. All I'm saying is this club profile screen, it's going to have a few more stars. Uh, well, in... Well, a few months' time. Now, of course, the transfer window is currently open. It shuts prior to the game against Bromley. So if there is any late deadline day stuff, we will be doing that today. Of course, it's our first year in League Two. It's the first time where there's actual transfer deadline days I have to contend with. 
I've got most of our transfer business done early, and you might have noticed there's a player here. There's a, yeah, there's a player here. Well observed, everyone. I talked about this guy on Twitter, formerly known as Twitter. It's X now. Jaime Guerrero. He's bloody good, isn't he? He, he's probably the best player we've ever signed at rugby. I'm going to go ahead and say it now. He might be the first player who I've signed, who I look at and go, you could win a Champions League in my squad. And maybe I'm getting carried away. Maybe I've gone baloney here. 17 years old, 17 first touch, 17 technique, 16 decisions, 16 balance. Incredible attributes across the board. Naturally a striker. May have to change our system to fit him into the team a little bit. Although I do feel like he could do a pretty good job as a more creative striker. I know what you're thinking. Jack, how much does he cost you? Fantastic question. £27,500. It is potentially the bargain of a century. His current ability... I, I can't believe I'm saying this. Is better than Ngoma's. Friendship ended with Ngoma. Jaime Guerrero is my new best friend now. I mean, we could just have them both as our friends, I suppose. That's probably a better plan. Now, sadly, he doesn't join us until the 1st of January, so we can't play him right away, and he hasn't got a work permit, but he is going to use one of our special slots. I've been looking at Seneca, having obviously discovered Jaime Guerrero at their other players. He's not even their hot prospect. Their hot prospect is a guy called Jesus, or Jesus, but Jesus sounds better, and... He's very good too. I mean, 16 tackling, 17 teamwork. He's 16. He's got potential. He's very, very good. How much is he worth and how much might he cost us? Zero to 35,000 pounds. At the moment, he was, doesn't want to join us because of his age. So that's a bit unfortunate, but we will keep our eye on him. And you might have spotted it in my board requests. I have been spamming requests to get more and more scouts. We have a scouting team of 11 people, which is crazy for this level. But because the amount of money we've just made through selling players year on year on year, I'm pumping it all into the infrastructure instead of going out there and buying big players. I feel like it's kind of working out for us. We have still got our scouting range set to Europe, and you can see here we've still got a fairly decent amount of our scouting budget left. I have sent my scouts out all around Europe. You can see some of the players they've scouted and looked at. Players like Michael O'Driscoll here, 18 years old, plays for Derry. He's not bad, not quite as exciting as Jaime. Ramon Mascaros, I've definitely not said his name correctly there, but this guy, 17, another player playing in Spain. Of course, I did spend the whole summer, didn't I, flirting with Spanish players, and you can kind of tell by all these scouting recommendations. There's loads of players in Spain in this universe. This team here, damn. Yeah, damn. They play in the same kind of tier, I think, as the other team that Guerrero's come from. It appears to be the under-19s youth league, but then there's some teams that aren't youth teams in here. These clubs do seem to exclusively use youth players. I've just clicked on a random example on here. Gorka Lossa plays for them. Apparently, I've already scouted him. 17 years old, four-star potential. He looks quite good too, but obviously I can only sign two foreign players without work permits at the moment, and I've done that for this year, so I need to calm down with my Spanish obsession that's going on. If there's anything to take away from that entire segment of me just going on about Spanish youngsters, go check out the Spanish under-19s leagues in your own save games, go through the clubs that aren't the under-19s teams and look at their key players and hot prospects. At least in my save game, there's some mental players out there. So yes, Jaime Guerrero is joining us in January. One man who's joining us a little bit sooner is Klaus Jaeger. He will be joining us in September, so we're still waiting for this guy to turn 18. We're going to get the birthday card out as his plane lands and welcome him to Rugby Town. Still a little bit of time to wait for him. But there is one signing I have picked up that has already gone through. Sean Nesbitt has joined us from Ballymena over in Northern Ireland. This guy's contract was expired, but he wasn't released by Ballymena. They were actually relegated from the Northern Irish Premier Division last year. And this guy playing for the under-21s had no value, was available to snap up. And, well, I've decided to snap him up. So Nesbitt is the only new signing in or out that's gone on during the first month of the season. That said, we have got some players with some interest in them. And the transfer window does slam shut during this next week. So during today's episode, we could be having to deal with some potential offers. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case. Because I'm really happy with the squad in its current form. That said, there are some players with some serious interest in them. So, I don't know. If the right bids came in, would I let Bradley Edwards, for example, go? Maybe. Now, like I already alluded to, we've played a month at the start of the season now, but last episode we had a triple header. Since then, only four games played, three of those in the league, two wins involving clean sheets. These were against Morecambe and Plymouth Argyle. The Plymouth game was in the EFL Cup. 
it wasn't exactly a good result. In fact, it was a win against a team in the championship where our goalkeeper got man of the match. Uh, yeah, it was that kind of game. Uh, we were very lucky in this one. Will still should probably be annoyed that he lost it. As the league games, I mentioned the 2-0 win against Morecambe. The other games that we've had, not exactly convincing. 4-3 against Stevenage. The scoreline doesn't really reflect how this game went, in truth. It was very, very even. A proper ding-dong battle. There was a couple of goals late on, but in the end of the day, we got the win. And the only other game that we've played was against Northampton Town. Our most recent result, Northampton, media prediction of 17th. We drew against them. Um, yeah, we drew against them. I did play the B team in this game, rotating them ahead of this upcoming game against Arsenal. I do regret that now. And naturally, whilst I can't expect to beat this Arsenal team, the first team is pretty rested. We've not got any of the injuries that we were worried about last episode lingering in the squad. And you might have noticed here, there's a load of players happy with their bonuses because I've decided I'm going to give the players a massive payout bonus if they do well in League or Cup competitions this year, just because we've got so much money floating around the club. So in a weird way, I'd like to beat Arsenal. I'm also a little bit scared of what kind of bonuses I'm going to end up paying them if we do well here. So with this being a League Cup game, we do get nine players on the bench. Of course, it is Premier League opposition. It's not quite as big and as sexy as the FA Cup. The money isn't split in the same way, so we don't get a big payday for an away game here. But ultimately, we've knocked out two championships teams in the first two rounds playing their B teams. I'd quite like to beat Arsenal away from home beating them with their B team out. Of course, if we now go on to get spanked in this game, we're going to move on from it quite promptly and hope that we can redeem ourselves against Bromley. Okay, it's a big game. Me and Mikel Arteta shaking hands. The iconic green suit is on display here in North London. What can we do? We're going to find out together. I thought they were going to play a rotator team. Saka's on the pitch. Odegaard's on the pitch. Mikel, you are aware this is the Carabao Cup, aren't you? They're 1-0 up after a minute. This might be. This could have been an error in judgment. Maybe I should not have come back for this game. I thought Arsenal wouldn't care about this. I thought Arsenal would look at a little old League 2 team midweek and go, you know what, it's not worth it. We've got the Champions League to worry about. Uh, not what's happened here. I even thought it'd be funny and wear a Liverpool shirt as we take on Arsenal, you know, during the week after they've lost to Liverpool in the FA Cup. The, there's a couple of errors in judgment today, I feel like. Gabriel Jesus, Havertz, Odegaard. It literally is their best 11, isn't it? They could not have played a stronger 11 if they tried. Now, you know what? I'm going to look for the positive. They scored after one minute. Since then, there's not been a single shot in the rest of the game. For us or for them, mind you. You know, we've not created anything ourselves. But with 16,000 to our belt, I think we know the kind of game we're playing here. It is a dirty, scrappy rugby town game where we're looking to break down the play. There's been no more highlights in the first half. It's 1-0 at the break. I'm going to tell the players they've been terrible. We've really struggled to have any of the ball. Goldsmith has also picked up a buck in. I do get five subs in this game, so I'm going to make one early. Norman Hamilton, come on down. Hamilton has had a decent goal-scoring record so far this year with four goals in five appearances in League Two. Maybe you can bring a bit of that magic to the Emirates. I am just sat thinking, do I want to change any of the instructions? You know, Arsenal are having a load of possession here. We're really struggling to have any of the ball. Maybe it's better just to try and get the ball forward quickly over the top as opposed to trying to, you know, build the play up. Because right now we're trying to build the play up. It's not working. Okay, look, the first half wasn't exactly great, but we can turn things around here. We can continue to do better. They have made some subs at the break and maybe rotated their team. I'm looking at our players expecting something to happen. We're an hour in, nothing is happening. I was about to make a tactical change, but Odegaard's just taken a quick free kick, and Yuri and Timber scored a second goal. They've done nothing in this game, but their right back scored two. Odegaard took the free kick so quickly, and the game barely had time to react. Keeley didn't react, neither did our defence. Arsenal doubled their lead. I mean, they've now got a free kick. I thought soon Sutbell, Bell, you know, former Spurs player, Keeley, former Spurs player, they'd have a point to prove against Arsenal. It's really not worked out like that. Also, what's going on here? Is Anthony Taylor about to give a penalty? What are we giving a penalty for, referee? I wasn't even looking at it. I saw the shot go wide, thought it was fine. Corruption. That's what we've seen here, ladies and gentlemen. Timber's about to score a hat-trick. I'm so upset. I want to pretend there's a silver lining. You know, in previous years where we've had these big cup games, I've looked back on them and gone, well, at least we created a lot against these big teams we played. In this game here, we've not played any good football. And rather than using this as a chance to really, you know, help with the confidence of players, I'm currently subbing off all the star players so they don't get injured for the game against Bromley midweek. If you're telling me, Jack, how do you think this game's going to go? Yuri and Timber getting a hat-trick from right-back isn't what I would have gone for in my prediction. 
I'll be honest. There's two minutes left. We've not had a shot. We've not had a shot. There's seven minutes of added time. Their goalkeeper, Kovar, got injured. They put Ramsdale in goal. I mean, is... I don't know why I came back for this game. I really don't. I mean, there's still the FA Cup to look forward to, I suppose. Maybe that'll be our competition. We've never done well in the League Cup before, so, you know. The reason we've not done well before is because it's our first year in it. But that's not the point. This man has one league goal in the past six seasons, and he's just scored a hat-trick against me in the Cup. I hate everything. All right, I mean, deadline day is now coming up. I'm not really looking to sign anyone myself, but if any bids come in, I'll come back. Otherwise, this could be the most anticlimactic episode ever. I might just be coming back on January 2nd going, there were no bids, we're back for Bromley. Who knows? So it is transfer deadline day now. There's not been any bids in the lead up to deadline day, but anything can happen, including deadline day rumours that apparently Santiago Sosa... I'm looking to sign. I've never heard of this bloke. I've not even got him scouted. Why is he being linked to with me? Apparently also, Dali Mura, we might be looking to sign. Is he quite good or am I going crazy? 26 years old, Italian, was on loan from Aberdeen. He never played for Aberdeen for some reason. He looks quite good. I really don't need another centre-back, but he's good. I mean, at the moment, my starting centre-backs are Andrani and McLaughlin. And if I compare McLaughlin with Danny Murra, Danny Murra is very, very good. How much does his agent think he's going to want? 2.4 to 3.2 thousand pounds. That's not going to work, is it? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll offer him a try, and if he comes to me, great. If he doesn't come to me, it's not the end of the world. I think because he's a free agent, we could sign him any time. I might be wrong. I think we can sign him any time. Who knows? No, no, I've forgotten how transfer windows work. It's been that long since I had to worry about them. I mean, with all the transfer budget and wage budget I've got remaining, I could just go out and get some monster signing, but I'm really trying to keep the wage budget under control. Right now, our highest earner is still Timmy on £1.5,000 a week, and I'd kind of like to keep it around that level, at least for this year. That said, here I am looking at all the players on the player search screen, sorted by potential. Daniel Kelly, Scottish free agent, 22 years old. He actually looks quite good. Probably could have some issues of injuries. His current ability just isn't quite good enough, really. We really have reached an international point in this save game, I've noticed. I've got players playing in the third division of France that we've just got scouted. Well, in Cutton, Savioli, uh, 19 years old, has potential, plays for Nancy. Uh, he's good. He's not really what I need, though, is he? He's the kind of player where if I was forced to sell Ricky D against my will, maybe Savioli would come in, but I don't want to sell Ricky D. Emil Rasset or Emili Rasset. Apologies, Emili. Uh, this guy has some crazy mentals for a centre mid. Unfortunately, he has absolutely no kind of creative spark to his game. Free flair, I guess the passing and vision isn't awful. Definitely looks like more of a centre back, doesn't he, than a centre mid but he does run with concrete in his boots, which is less than ideal. Apparently, though, he might get a work permit and he might be available for 40 to 400,000 pounds. I mean, the worst thing is I can afford him and I'm tempted, but I really shouldn't be, should I? Could I? Mm, I am tempted. I'm just thinking about the fact that Gucci is still considered a squad player this year and I kind of don't love Gucci. And a defensive midfielder, like, I could definitely make something happen with. Not you, so, sir. But Rasset here has really good mentals and defending. And he's 19 years old. He is going to be 20 in a few months. But he's very good. He's got a minimum release clause of £140,000. So I could sign this guy for £140,000. And he should get a work permit. Although it says here he struggles to be deemed a player of a high enough standard for a work permit even after appeal. I swear he, I swear his agent just said he'd get a work permit. Am I going crazy? <sighs> my scouts really, really like him. The thing is, I'm already using up my ESC slot. I get three, uh, two of them. If I sign your asset, when Jaime joins, I've got a problem. I'll tell you what, I'm going to bid his release calls and see if he gets the work permit. I will appeal it and stuff, but if he doesn't get it on appeal, I can't use my ESC slot on him because I feel like I have to save it for Jaime when he joins in January. When I saw players that we've got scouted by ability, there's, there's more players here. There's more Spanish players as well. Daniel Gonzalez. Now, he's quite good. I don't need another striker, though, do I? What am I doing here on deadline day? Also, the Chinese goalkeeper's still a free agent. We were looking at him in the summer. I don't need a goalkeeper. And I'm just looking at players that are 19 years old that we just have scouted. Mac Sehic here. He looks very good, the Bosnian. According to my scouts, he has no potential. But his polygon's impressive. 
but I don't think I need a temperamental target, man. It's not what I'm in the market for. And if you sat wondering, Jack, what are you in the market for? The, the honest answer is at this point, I don't think I'm meant to be in the market for anything, and yet I've just made a bid for a player, so who knows? Okay, for my own benefit, I have now just hit continue to force stuff to happen here. Uh, Rasset is interested in discussing terms. Apparently, he may be successful in obtaining a work permit. Let's hope he is successful. L... A, a, a Gido want him back. They can't have him back. I want him here as a squad player. He wants to be a squad player. I do like the look of this guy as a defensive mid. He wants £1,000 a week. <sighs> Apparently, I'm being told he might not get a work a permit. Even if I don't sign him, I have to pay the money for the work permit just to try, don't I? Optional extension of one year. Wages £1,000. It's quite reasonable, isn't it? Okay, his agent's accepted this offer. I mean, if we sign him for £140,000, it's not a bargain. It's not some kind of crazy bargain bin sign. But he does look very good at 19. And as a squad player defensive mid option, I feel like you could do a lot worse. At the moment, Brody Spencer is our defensive midfielder. Is Rasset better than him? I mean, Rasset's not as good with the ball at his feet, but the mentals, the physicals, the raw defensive ability and the fact he's 19 could make him better, maybe. Hmm. Guess it depends on what you want for your defensive mid, isn't it? I feel like in Football Manager, I go through micro-obsessions. You know, in the lower leagues, it tends to be just strikers. Just sign as many strikers as you can. Then it turns into centre mids, or rather, not centre mids, but players I'm convinced should play centre mid. And well, today's current micro obsession is the Spanish. Okay, Dali Mura is coming on trial to us. This guy is a very good centre back. And if he could get a work permit, I might be tempted. We'll see what our scouts say about him. Our scouts think he's a good League One player and he has the potential to be a Premier League player in the future. Super consistent, loves important matches. Oh, I really probably should be making a bid for him. I mean, would he get a work permit? I suppose. Now he wants now he wants seven thousand pounds. He isn't going to get a work permit, according to our staff, anyway. But now he wants £7,000. He wanted £2,000, didn't he, before we took him on trial? People sometimes say, Jack, why don't you take players on trial? Because sometimes this happens, and it just upsets me. Edwards wants to discuss his asking price. How much do you think you're worth, mate? How much do you think you're worth? 675. You know what, mate? If someone bids 675, I'll sell you. Rasset's work permit's been turned down. I've just spent £20,000 on the first work permit attempt. We might as well appeal this bit as well, mightn't we? Tell you what, after the calm of the Arsenal game, this has now got all the stress levels of a transfer special. There's 10 hours left to the window, by the way. I really shouldn't be signing anyone, and yet I'm looking at a 36-year-old Mario Goetze thinking, I wonder... Don't do it, Jack. Don't do it. Be strong. Daniel Perez here. Venezuelan, 26 years old. He looks absolutely insane. There is no way I can sign this guy. Yeah, there's no way I can sign him. I don't know why he showed up as a possible transfer. I mean, admittedly, he is very, very good, and I am now going to send a scout to look at him. But I, there's no way I could ever sign this bloke, is there? I mean, he makes Jude look like a small child. Daniel Perez, I'm going to keep an eye on him. I've added him to the shortlist. I'm really setting myself up for pain, aren't I? I'm now just looking at more players sorted by reputation who are free agents. What could go wrong? It's taking a lot of self-control. I'm slowly but surely managing to hit continue and resist the urge to sign players for the sake of it. We'll also say with seven hours left, no players of ours have had bids on them yet. So this has been a very anticlimactic deadline day. Two hours left of the window. Uh, I mean, Edwards is still attracting some interest. I'll offer him out one last time for 600,000. I feel like for 600,000, I would be willing to let him go if I can have him back on loan for the rest of the year and I get the 50% profit that we've really been hard negotiating on all the sales we've made in recent seasons. Of course, offering him out for that is one thing. A team still has to bid that amount of money and with 30 seconds after the window, no one is making that bid. And Emilia Rasser's transfer has fallen through. Rasa, I'm really sorry. I'm going to keep him on the new gen watch list. He's the kind of player who next summer, if I decide that I need another ESC European exciting signing, I might go in for him. Ah, uh, okay. Anyone I do sign after deadline day, I wouldn't be able to register. So, um, yeah. Yeah, signing players from now until Christmas, probably not sensible. That does mean if I want to sign Christian Dalimura, uh, I'd be paying his salary until he joined us in January and was able to be registered, which just doesn't seem smart, really. But then again, no one else is going to sign him probably in the meantime. This was the advantage I had when I was a non-league team. No one else was in for this kind of player in November, so I could get him for really cheap.
Right, we have got a game to do today. This one against Bromley. I am tempted, and I say I'm tempted, I've already made the decision. I am doing something bold in this game. I am playing the B team. You know, the first team they did so well against Arsenal with their zero shots on target. I thought, not, why not, you know, really stretch the limits of our team, test the full depth and see how we get on. Um, saying all of that, but some bit is coming back from an injury. And looking at the little hearts here, thinking he'll be fine. Um, I mean, in terms of the personnel, it's a team that should seem fairly familiar. Keeley in goal, of course. Moreland and Lissa playing at centre-back. These guys at this point are kind of our third and fourth choice centre-back, in my opinion. Two very, very good players. Callum Moreland from set pieces. An absolute battering ram. Batumba and Stevenson were our backups in the wing-back areas last year. They've continued to hold down that squad role. They're going to start these games today. Uh, Coventry playing defensive mid with Pritchard in front. Of course, he is a player we sold this year. We've loaned him back. He's been on the bench a lot. Has, well, another chance to start in this game here. And to be fair, he has actually started already a fair few games this year due to the injury to Ingoma. Elsewhere, Forsyth comes in to play Mazala, has had some injuries to start his time at the club. The player who has the face that makes it look like he's done a sneaky fart, that no one else has noticed, was him. Um, he's going to be playing our left centre mid position. Shipston over on the right hand side. Not an international duty with India. That's a big thumbs up from me. And in the final third, it is going to be Norman Hamilton. And alongside him, I'm going with Joe Richards. It's his second start of the season. The one game he did start previously, he scored in. Let's see if he can keep his goal a game record going in this one here. I feel like when you hear goal a game record, you think, oh, he's been doing that for a few games. It's literally one match he's played. Is it really a goal to game record? I mean, technically so, but... I wouldn't put my house on them to maintain it. So we are playing our B team here. Bromley currently bottom of the league. This is their second season in League 2 after they were promoted. They've given us a penalty after a minute 20. And is Shipston going to take it? He missed a Penenka last episode. I should have just taken him off penalties completely. But he is our best penalty taker. He's down the pecking order as a result of that miss. The good news for him is he has scored this time. I'm still thinking about the Penenka. It still makes me angry. If you didn't see last episode, you didn't see the Penenka. The best penalty taker in our team, yes, but the man has an ego. Look at the way he's celebrating. He thinks he's robbing bloody hood as he pulls back the arrow. No, you're not, son. You're a ship, son. It's awful. <laughs> right, we've got a we've got a corner. Forsyth, bail us out of this, mate. We're, we're currently embracing some work the space cringe. And now we have to embrace the fact that Moreland, with his massive forehead, has added the ball over. Ball launched forward by Bromley. Lissa nods it down. Batumba, Pritchard, Hamilton falls all the way forward to Richards who misses the target completely. So far, so good. I do feel like this year, with 46 league games to contend with and a few extra cup competitions and such, rotation is going to be key. The fact that we do have a starting 11 that I can kind of make up of squad players that can slot in for this kind of game is a good thing. I suppose, really. It's a good thing if you can get a result and not give away a penalty like that. It was a crunching tackle. Bromley with now a chance to respond with a penalty of their own. Right as I'm bigging up the squad depth and how well we're doing with our depth, they score to make it 1-1. I'll uh, watch what I say between now and full time. That is, by the way, Bromley's first shot of the game, their only shot of the game. In spite of their lack of chance creation, they've had a decent amount of the ball, Bromley, just not in particularly advanced areas. You can kind of see that from the average positions. So they're having to play a nice, narrow, compact shape with how we build up the play. You can see as well how far forward the wingbacks are getting forward for us. In spite of that, though, we're not really creating anything from open play. And despite this little flurry of chances on the XG chart, none of them were highlight-worthy opportunities. Far from pleased with what I've just seen. Need to see more in the second half. I am going to change things up, I think, a little bit tactically here. I'm going to get rid of the look for overlap instruction and ask the players to go a little more direct. The look for overlap instruction is an interesting one because it encourages players to hold on to the ball to allow the wingbacks to overlap and getting rid of that and going more direct. We're just going to try and get the ball up the pitch that little bit quicker, maybe try and catch Bromley out on the rare occasion where they do find themselves with the ball advancing into our half. Moreland with the ball is going to lay it to Forsyth. Stevenson, left wing back. Got man of the match in the opening game of the season. Hasn't really shone since then. And well, hasn't exactly been perfect in this game here. Bromley with the ball on the far side. It is Griffiths for them, their own left back. Kind of in his own little world. If we could win the ball off him, we had a chance to maybe make something happen. Instead, though, some defensive action needed. So the ball's going to be whipped in. 
And it's a free header. Who is that with their hand up? Moreland, what are you appealing for, son? See, the issue with Moreland is, yes, he does have, I think, like 19 or 18 jumping reach and good heading. He also has the mentals of a potato. So whilst he knows how to jump, he forgets how to jump at times. That's how they scored. I know you think I'm joking. I mean, look at the tens across the board for his mentals. Then his 19 jumping reach. If only he could remember how to jump, he'd be great. Okay, well, we've conceded to start this half. If you want to look for some good silver lining, there's 40 odd minutes still to turn things around. A response immediately could be amazing. Not that kind of response, though. That was poor. Bromley are creating a little bit more in this half. Of course, with us going more direct, that's somewhat inevitable. We're going to be losing the possession that little bit more, but I'm hoping we can just create a little bit more and get the ball into areas like this. Hamilton, one-on-one, -on -one, puts it wide. You know what? I think I've seen enough in this game. Jude, on, on you come, Jude. Goldsmith, on you come. We get five subs here, and Goma... You can come on through the middle as well. Get the big guns out. The cavalry have arrived. Can they make an immediate impact? Shipston, corner, whipped in. Robson on this occasion is going to pluck it out the air. I suppose ordinarily these star players of ours, you know, they play from minute zero. They are coming on now against a tired, worn out defence. And we're going to hope they can link up here as N'Goma lays it to Shipston. Options in front of him. Can he pick out one of them? Anything is better than losing the ball. Coventry, fantastic switch of play if Stevenson can keep it alive. Back post, Jude is there. That is his first goal of the season. I know that's mental to think about. He has been injured a lot. His goal scoring hasn't been all there. One of the reasons why I was willing to drop him. Maybe just dropping him from a match was what he needed. I don't know how to describe this. You know how, like, small children, sometimes you have to give them a bit of a reality check if they're acting out. I've done that with Soon Sup Bell. I said, you know what? You're not getting a chocolate advent calendar this year. We've got to the 10th of December. He's been better behaved. He's got a goal. He can have 10 days worth of chocolates now. If you're wondering, what is this analogy? I have no idea. I have no children. So uh, it could be an accurate or an inaccurate analogy. But yeah, sometimes you need to give them a reality check or something. At least footballers you do. Maybe not children. Maybe Goldsmith needs another reality check. He heads it wide. Coventry corner. I mean, there's a flurry of chances now, if nothing else. It is the first episode of the week I'm recording. Obviously, I record Monday's episodes on a Friday and then Tuesday's episodes on a Monday. I feel like whenever I do the Tuesday episodes, there's a degree of rust to shake off. You know, two days without a YouTube video, I forget how to do things. Can you tell from this live commentary that's what's happening? What am I waffling about? I do not know, and Goma's missed the target. The more I think about it, the more I realise I'd be a terrible parent. Imagine not getting your kid a chocolate advent calendar because they're not scoring goals in League 2. What kind of monster am I? Probably deserve to lose this game now. Bromley at bottom of the table, just as a reminder. They're 3-2 up. I'm so angry. It was. I knew it was going to happen before it even happened. It's another ball into the box as well in the air. I mean, I suppose when you change the entire defence, you know that there's going to be a lack of chemistry from set pieces. That is still poor, isn't it? I mean, it's poor. If nothing else, it's the rugby town way. It's 3-2. There's still time for stuff to happen here. Batumba, options in the middle. Goldsmith is there. He heads it against the crossbar. I'm making more subs. You guys know what time it is. It's the free striker system time. Although I'm realising here, I don't have another striker to bring on. So in Goma, you're going to play as a striker, mate. Happy birthday. And Goma is going to play as a deep line forward on attack. I am going to bring in Jake Garrett for Forsyth and play him as a Mazala out on the left-hand side. Shipston will play out on the right. And given the fact it's desperate times and we need desperate measures, the wing-backs can now go on attack. Lissa with the ball for us. There's five minutes left of this game. We're giving away the ball in such a poor area here. You can see statistically, our XG is amazing. Our shots on target today has been shocking. Over half their XG is made up of a penalty that they scored as well. They really haven't done anything in this game, Bromley. Except they have. They've scored three. We're going to need to score three if we want anything. We've scored a third. It's offside. It's offside. It doesn't even count. Probably a bottom of the league. I thought I could play the rotated team against them. Spoilers. I couldn't. We've lost 3-2, and I, I don't know how. Today's episode's just been awful from an actual gameplay standpoint, and indeed some of the commentary. Hope it's better tomorrow. With that result there, we actually drop outside of the automatic promotion places. We are still only behind Cambridge United on goal difference, but their goal difference is absolutely wild. Whilst three automatic spots are up for grabs, maybe this result here is just a little reminder. We cannot get complacent, even against the worst team in this league. Maybe I shouldn't be playing the B team.
This episode started off so well, didn't it, with me selling that slate clause for some silly money, getting the training facilities improved, and then showing you guys hi, May. I feel like the only way to end this episode is just to stare at this bloke's profile, because it's the only thing cheering me up at the moment. I hope that's fine. Let me know what you make of this signing, and indeed, have you found any similar players in Spain? It feels like the under-19s is a bit of a goldmine, just from some of the players that have come uh, our way from our scouts. I think I'm actually going to send a scout over there just to scout it permanently. I mean, maybe I'm being melodramatic, but we've conceded six goals in two games, albeit one of the games was against Arsenal. St still not used to it. So, you know, this is a shock to the system. Right, I'm going to go away, dust myself off. I have to re-watch this video and edit it. So that's a fun, exciting thing. Tomorrow's episode will be better, I hope. I'll see you guys for it. If you've enjoyed my suffering, leave a like. Until next time, it's me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Oh my god, what an awful episode.